Recently, Figma rolled out their new UI3 update and it's been a complete UI overhaul with a whole different experience. I've been using the new UI3 on a daily basis for just over a week now. And what I wanted to do in this video was share some of the key differences that I experienced, some of the things that I really liked, as well as some of the challenges that I faced. All right, let's check it out. And here's Figma as we know it. To access the new UI, go down over here to this little help icon and then select on new UI. And there we go, it changed. Now, let's take a look at the changes. The first thing that you're gonna notice is we have more screen real estate, and we do, I'll show you why. But then also, it looks like we have these floating panels now on both sides, on our navigational, and then also on our properties. Now, here is the first big change. Up here, we no longer have the toolbar. Instead, we have a toolbar down here on the bottom. And then we have some of the other elements like share and play over here inside of the properties panel. Let's take a look over here. Now, this is again, it got that floating look, which I like. There's a design consistency here between the different panels and the toolbar. And then they also have a new actions option right here. Now, we don't have it quite yet, but Figma AI is going to be rolling out, and this is where we're going to find Figma AI. So, this is the first, the real big change right here. And just really quick for reference, let's go back to the old UI. And then you can see we have the toolbar back over here. Now, I like this because any bit of extra real estate that I could get makes a big difference, especially when I'm working on my MacBook. And then we have right here an option to make it collapsible uh, more easy. Now, you could use keyboard shortcuts, but this is a great option for those of us like me who can't memorize every single keyboard shortcut across all of the apps that we use. So this just makes it a lot easier. So that's the first big difference is a toolbar. Next one is going to be over here in our navigational. Now the navigational isn't as big as over here in our properties panel, but it is still really good. It is more minimized. It's more minimalistic. They have cleaned up the assets right here where let's take a look at the old UI. It helps out to go back and forth. When we look at the assets here, you can see it's, you know, it's, it, it's not as minimalistic. And then also in the layers over here, well, let's go back and go to the new UI. And then we have options here. We could clean it up, keep it more minimalistic. I dig this. This is one of those changes that I like because I like things to be more organized, cleaner, and more minimalistic. So that is the second big change. Now the next one, and this one is quite possibly the biggest where I find the most challenges as well. And that's going to be in our properties panel. It has a whole lot of differences. Now, what Figma has done here was try to organize everything a lot better because a lot of the updates that we had with say auto layout and the updates to auto layout, well, it started to build up quite a bit in here. Let's go really quick to the old UI just so we could take a look at some of those differences. And well, I can't expand this. That's another thing I forgot to share. If we go to the new UI, we could expand these and we can make them bigger as well, which helps out, especially if you know we have a lot going on. It makes it easier to use. Let's go back here to the old UI. So here inside of the old UI, we have we kind of have a mixture of things inside of our frame area. We have some elements that would be better off for auto layout, like clipping the content, uh, the hugging, the fix. This all is more of the layout right here. Now let's go to the new UI and we can see how that all changes. Here inside the auto layout, it looks like they try to organize it a bit better, putting all layout options inside of here like our clip content, our, our resizing, our hugging and fixing. Uh, the only thing is going to be the absolute positioning, which is no longer called absolute positioning. It's called ignore auto layout. This took me a little while to figure out. This is one of those challenges that I faced. 
Also, you'll notice that the border radius is no longer here. Instead, it's here now inside of the appearance. So we do have a few changes here. Uh, some things are pretty much the same. Fill, stroke, they look pretty much the same, but they do have new icons inside of here that we got to get used to. But then another difference that is kind of big, I feel, is going to be the layout grid being down here at the bottom now. So we got the layout grid, which in the old UI was at the top. And I mean, this is just changing the order of things. But again, this is more about getting used to the different layout now, getting used to knowing where things are at because you know when we're designing in here when you're used to figma and you're used to the old ui like let's go back to this old ui well you already pretty much know where everything is at and you're going to be going to all of those things but with the new ui well we're going to have to retrain ourselves in a lot of ways when it comes to locating things like the border radius uh, the layout grid and then just using auto layout now since I've been using it the challenges that I face on this have not been that big one of the biggest ones that I have faced though has been the icons so the icons were I mean I like the modern icons I love having everything modernized but at the same time they don't really like this doesn't really look like a gradients right here uh, let me take a look at what the old gradient looked like just so I could remind myself. Okay, see, this to me looks like a gradient, but you know, you got that gradient on the actual icon. We go back to the new UI and it is a bit different. So you're going to have to get used to these new icons and that was probably one of the biggest challenges that I face that and getting used to the different positions of all of your options here inside of the properties panel now let's go back over to the old UI I want to share something else that I found is going to take a bit of getting used to that's going to be up here at the top toolbar so I use this quite a bit inside of my design process when I'm creating graphics uh, these up over here I got pretty good with my shortcuts when it comes to these but up here you know I do use these often now let's go back to the new UI and you know we don't have that top bar anymore the way this works now is let's go ahead and let's select two elements right here when we select them now the option is going to open over here at the top and then we have our options like what we would have had up here in the top toolbar. Now this, it takes a little bit to get used to, but I kind of like this. This is, this is, I feel Figma's way to minimize things. Like you don't need it showing unless if you have your elements selected and ready to go. Figma has grown a whole lot throughout the years. They've added a lot. So I see what they have done in this update where they're trying to minimize things and it's going to take some time to get used to i've been using it full on i have found myself a few times wanting to go back to the old ui just so i could do something really quickly but i forced myself to stick with it and to figure it figure it out and i'm hoping that this video could help you figure it out as well if not too there is another document that figma created that shows you all of the different changes right here but what I did first was I tried to just work with it at first until I found like it was time to go to the document that's just part of my learning process now overall I dig a lot of this I like this I like the more minimalistic look and feel of it uh, I do wish these were floating though like I try clicking on these panels I feel like the way these panels look like you would think that they would be floating that you could drag them around and put them in any position that you like that would have been awesome maybe they'll do that in the future but as far as i know you can't do that you could only resize them but the next thing i am looking forward to is seeing the new figma ai soon as that rolls out and i get access to it i'm going to play with it i'll create a video on that as well i'm also looking forward to seeing how this works inside of my design process because this is all new right here but it does give you better access to your plugins uh it this it changes the way that we're going to use it a lot of these updates are quite different so have fun with it get used to it 
Uh, my suggestion is to embrace it, try to learn it the best that you can right now. It is going to have a few uh, challenges. I'm facing challenges, most definitely, especially here inside of the properties panel with the new icons. But I'm going to work through it and just have fun with it. I would love to hear your feedback on it, and I'll definitely have that AI video coming out soon. And here's my final thoughts. This is a much welcome update. I really enjoy the more minimalistic and modern approach to the UI inside of Figma. And I also feel that this could be something other platforms follow. I feel that Figma is setting a very good example of what we need to continue to do to refresh in and update UIs, especially inside of the WordPress space, because we have a lot of plugins, a lot of tools, page builders, and even WordPress itself. There are so many opportunities to improve the UI inside of the tools that we are using, because look at in Figma, they constantly add new features. And as you add new features, well, you're adding more items, more actions, more clutter to your UI. And it sort of just starts to stack on top of each other. It speaks volumes when you see the leading design tool for web and UI design, feel the need to update the UI to continue to make it easier to use and give a better user experience. But what are your thoughts? How do you feel about the new UI inside of Figma? Are you facing any challenges? Is there something you would like to see improved? Let us know inside the comments. I would love to hear your feedback as well. And don't forget that good YouTube stuff. Like and subscribe. I really appreciate the support. And I will see you inside of the next video. Thank you for watching.